Everyone follow, right? Okay. Remember, I'm trying to show you how from the inside it crosses the axis that there's that it's very important that I'm trying to show you there's something inside it. There's something in the middle. Okay? No one's ever been able to see this inside the middle before. Okay? Here we have going backwards. We see that the one connects to the five. Okay? So, we're going to go backwards instead. So, a half of one is 0.5. A half of 0.5, okay, and there's a five and I think five. Then a half of 0.5 is 0.25. But two plus five equals seven. This is where it starts to suddenly hit home that you're about, that you see that I really am meaning perfection when I say perfection. So now, 0.25, is a 0.5 of half of 0.25, and 0.25, half of that is 0.125. Well, 1 plus 2 plus 5 equals an 8, still. These numbers are never changing, they're never moving. A half of 0.125 equals 0.0625, which equals 13, which equals 4. Half of 0.0625 equals 0.0325, which equals 11, which equals 2 equals 0.01625 if we half of this again, which is one, and I can't say the numbers after that, I'm not going to try it because it's just too long. Does everyone understand that so far? All I was doing was half Out of the plane of the sphere, the circuit of, um, of time, it comes as a perpendicular, uh, and its intersection with the time is uh, what we're seeing there, but it actually comes perpendicularly out. Okay, so uh, in that sense, it's dimensionless only except when it intersects the... Uh, totally correct. Yeah. Pretty heavy duty, huh? What he just said was that this energy going out is omnidimensional. The only thing that we can have for an analogy for it is the queen on a chessboard. The queen can move diagonally, she can move horizontally, vertically, she can move any way she wants. She divine, defines the whole game. She's our most prized piece in the game of chess. I have a saying. Numbers are technology. Okay? Math is a science. And, um, and the universe is a machine. And spirit is mechanical. The powers of ten come from half of one is 0.5. That would be one over one, by the way, correct? One, line, one. This would be five over ten, okay? So the ten goes there. This would be 25, line, 100. 100 would go there. This would be 125 thousandths. Okay, so we have now 625 ten thousandths, 3,125 hundred thousandths. This is called the powers of 10. 1 times 10 is 10, 10 times 10 is 100, 10 times 100 is 1,000. 10 times 1,000 is 10,000. 100,000, million, 10 million, 100,000, 1 billion, 10 billion, 100 billion, a trillion. Everyone have it? The third time that the 10 reoccurs again is exactly horizontal. But it had to go 1, 2, 3 to reemerge again. This energy has a phasing in thirds. So the 10s are horizontally lining up, these are horizontally lining up, and these are horizontally lining up. Why? Because there's a spray, okay, shooting out from the center. This is a spray. There are little BBs. We see the points here are mirrors. They're totally different than these two and totally different from these two, just as the tens are different from the hundreds are different from the ones. Okay? So in our infinity, we have three horizontal lining ups of three pairs with each pair being totally different from the other pairs. Does everyone see that? These pairs are kind of deep in the inside. These are way on the outside. And these are kind of in the middle. Okay? Because of the sprays making that shape, that construct. 
we see that tens are always here, we see that hundreds are always here, and ones are always here, no matter what. Here's a million, here's a billion. They're always going to still be ones. Okay? Now, this is a geometry. And in science and math today, they teach that numbers, as in arithmetic, cannot explain geometry. And I discovered they were wrong. I discovered that numbers are geometry. They are Numbers are not modeling something. They are the model themselves. If these two points are perfect mirrors, there's an axis down the center, everything's a mirroring right and left. It's called bilateral symmetry. Then what do we do with the 1 and 8, since they're not mirrors? Or the 2 and 7, since they're not mirrors? Or the 4 and 5, since they're not mirrors? Okay. So the only way I can do that is I go ahead and I say, well, where's our symmetry that I've been talking about? Where's our parity? Where's our mirroring? Where's our wings? See how the right side over here is a perfect mirror? They're like two wings on a bird flying. Where is it? So I take our multiples of one from the standard multiplication table. I reduce them to single digit, which I call the kids multiplication table, using horizontal math. And I look at the symmetry. Well, multiples of one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, multiples of A is 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 9. I look at multiples of, of 2. 2, 4, 6, 8, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Multiples of 7 are perfect mirror. 7, 5, 3, 1, 8, 6, 4, 2, 9. I look at multiples of, of 5 and 4. 4, 8, 3, 7, 2, 6, 1, 5, 9, which is the total reverse of 5. 5, 1, 6, 2. Everything's a mirror. 3 is 3, 6, 9, 3, 6, 9. 6 is 6, 3, 9, 6, 3, 9. But 9, it's self-similar. It's always 9, 9, 9, 9. So let's see if that's true. So sure enough, I go multiples of 1 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That means 8's the last number before 9. I better have an 8 over here being a mirror of that 8. And I better have a 7 after it. But 2 8's is 16. I'm writing them for your benefit, which is 7. 3 8's is 24. There it is again, which is a 6. 32, 5. 44, and of course I got 3, 2, 1, 9 after it because once I got three numbers, I got a stereoscopic projection. I know all the remaining numbers are going to be at the same sequence. Perfect mirrors. The real clincher is when I did it with 2. 2, 4, 6, 8, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Okay? Which is 7, 5, 3, 1, 8, 6, 4, 2, 9. 